Good evening. I am Karen Taylor, Program Director of the General Society of Mechanics and Tradesmen of the City of New York. And I'm so pleased that you can be with us this evening. Uh, tonight, we have uh, both an in-person audience and um, an online audience. So a very warm welcome to both constituencies. We are so delighted that you can be here. Tonight's talk um, is dedicated to a book lover's guide to New York. And I will be shortly introducing our speaker, who is received beside me, Theo Latak. Um, I'd like to express our thanks to Pam Sommer of Rizzoli for her help in arranging tonight's program. And I'm also so pleased to welcome back Books on Call NYC, a mobile book selling service. And their representative here tonight, Charles. The last time they were here was February 2020. So it's really wonderful that they could come back this evening. For those of you who may be less familiar with the General Society, um, a brief introduction. The General Society of Mechanics and Tradesmen of the City of New York is a nonprofit organization that was founded in 1785 by 22 artisans. Today, our 236 year old organization continues to serve and improve the quality of life of the people of the City of New York through our educational programs. Uh, these include our library, of course, which you're in tonight, which has just recently celebrated 200 years. Uh, this is actually the library's fifth home. Um, our John M. Mossman Lock Museum, um, which you are welcome to have a look at after the lecture, uh, which is full of locks and safe locks. Our tuition-free Mechanics Institute, uh, an evening school that we've been running for a number of what, over Goodness, I I'm, I'm 150 years. 162 ish. 162 years. And finally, <laughs> our lecture series. Our lecture series dates back um, to 1838. So it will be coming up in 200 years in the not too distant future. At the conclusion of tonight's talk, there'll be a short uh, 10 to 15 minute QA. Uh, we will accept a few questions in both in person and online. And I would ask that the online questions be typed in. And I do apologize if we're not able to get to your, all the questions that we may have. Um, tonight, as you may have gathered, we're having uh, an interview uh, format. And our interview this evening, as I mentioned, is Cleo Lacan. Cleo Lacan is a London-born, New York-based author who always loved books. Born into an artistic family of excessive collectors, she grew up surrounded by books. Her first novel was Un Fami uh, with Brasse. Since her move to New York, she has been carefully exploring all the literary hideouts and secrets of the city, resulting in a book lover's guide to New York, a collaboration with her late father, Pierre Latin. Pierre Latin was a well-respected artist, interior decorator, illustrator, and art collector. He rose to prominence in the early 70s when he drew covers for the New Yorker. He had multiple art exhibits all around the world, decorated restaurants, hotels, film sets, and wrote dozens of books. And as you can see in the rotating images on view, how wonderful and how charming uh, Pierre Latin's illustrations are. I think every book lover harbors a secret fantasy of opening a bookstore. But very few of us actually make this dream a reality. Cleo has actually made this happen. And on September 15th, six weeks ago, Cleo opened her own bookstore, Hello Cat Books. You may see in it as the slides go around, you may some, see some um, images from that uh, in the East Village. Um, and it's really, it's, you know, it's, I, I, Words can't begin to describe what a wonderful thing that is to have done, Cleo. It really is the most fantastic thing. So it is now my great pleasure to introduce to you, Cleo. So Cleo, could you talk about your background and what led you to create and compile this book? Uh, well, I am... Um, 
when I wrote, uh, so I moved to New York, and then when I wrote my first book, I was going to um, libraries all the time, and I wrote most of it in a uh, public library. And so I wanted to write about public libraries, and I explored many in New York, and um, then I thought it'd be interesting to also expand to bookshops, literary landmarks, um, places where there are libraries that aren't necessarily open to the public, like here, and um, even walking around New York, there's so many uh, little, you know, the little red flakes with so-and-so lived here, and so I just thought it'd be nice to have it all together in a book, neighborhood by neighborhood, so that people just walk around and discover different places. Um, Cleo, I, I'm going to put you on the spot. Would you like to read? I just happen to have a copy of this magnificent book here. Would you like to read a, an extract just to um, give sure. just to give our audience a, a flavor of the book? Because I think um, it, it's written very much, and I think you have a very distinctive style, Theo. And I just want to say what a gorgeous, exquisite book it is, and that the audience here tonight will have an opportunity to purchase it afterwards. And, and, and of course, it is available through Rizzoli online. Well, um, I will read about um, this place called uh, Gramercy Typewriter Company, which is now on 108 West 17th Street. So it's on 17th between, uh, between 6 and 7. And um, so Abraham Schweitzer first opened the Gramercy Typewriter Company in 1932 in the little basement of a townhouse in Gramercy Park. Now in its third generation of owners, all from the name from the same Schweitzer family, of course, the Gramercy Typewriter Company is known for providing New York with excellent typewriter repairs and services, as well as offering expert advice on some of the very best typewriters, which they also have for sale. After 47 years in the Flatline building, Paul Schweitzer, Abram's son, Paul's son Jay, and their friendly clerk are now only a short walk away on 17th Street. The little shop is full of absolutely gorgeous machines, a couple of pale pink and blue royals, a red valentine, the same one they have in the family collection at the MoMA, and all kinds of Olympias and Olivetti's, all of which you can buy. There are also lots of other machines dropped off and waiting to be repaired that you can have a look at. On a recent visit, one of them happened to be Tom Hanks's. You can ask Schweitzer all about the shop and the company's history while you listen to him type away impulsively repair slips or whatever else he has to write up on his own machine. It's a splendid and novel place to stop by when the writer in you is inspired by all the bookshops you've visited and demands a machine with which to finally hammer out that nut. Perhaps your current machine needs some work done to it and you can go in for a reassuring chat about all the other authors who have been in with their own typewriters and need an update. So that was one of the places that was a bit sort of unexpected because it's not really a bookshop or a literary landmark per se, but it still has some sort of connection because a lot of people write and type writers. And so it's worthy of being absolutely. Worthy. And also the shop was really cool. But I actually, when I wrote this, it was still in the flat iron building. Well, actually, yeah, yeah, it was across from the flat iron building. Um, but now it's, yeah, that's in the But it's still very nice, I think it's Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, a, a very important part of the book um, are the fabulous illustrations, a result of the partnership with uh, your late father. Uh, as I mentioned, the renowned uh, illust uh, illustrator, Pierre Latin. Um, could you talk about his illustrations and indeed your collaboration with your father in the book? Uh, sure. Well, my father started his career actually in New York um, when he was uh, a teenager still. When he was 18, he came to New York and he submitted some of his drawings to, or he just sent them to someone. He, like an acquaintance kind of friend of a friend of mine. And um, 
and yeah, and they ended up on the cover of the New Yorker. And so then he would often come to New York, um, you know, to work. And um, he would draw New York a lot. I mean, anyway, I wasn't really going to ask anybody else to draw the book, but it was fitting that it was New York and that it was his last uh, project. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, it was, Collaborating with him is always a bit complicated because you know experimenting with these people take a long time, et cetera, et cetera. So, but aside from that, I mean, it's great. I mean, you know, fine. Well, the first step, and the, I mean, the end result, um, I know it's going to be very different from the audience who is here, but I wonder if I like. You know, sh show the online audience, you can see it from here, just some of the fantastic images. Even the, um, I, I think there's an appropriate term, is it the bookends? Was it what you call this part of the book? Is there a name for it? I forget. Um, well, whatever, whatever it's called, you can see even those gorgeous illustrations. And I mean, there are just so many in the, uh, there. I, it's probably very hard. To, I don't know if the online audience or indeed our in person audience can see, but that's like a lovely little sketch of um, Carol Evans and Tina Brown. So it's just absolutely exquisite. They really are just fabulous. And, and, and the whole book itself, it's only just been put together with, you know, such love and affection um, for, all the, for all the wonderful places um, that exist in New York. Um, even like, you know, small things like the magnifying glass. They're just really lovely, lovely touches. So anyway, a, fa a fantastic book. Um, now, your book is a compendium of literary treasures, iconic bookstores, and, um, and other um, hidden um, things that would be related to books. For instance, who knew there was a library hidden in a subway station? The Terence Cardinal Cook Cathedral Library. I've never heard of that before. Yes, yes it's extraordinary. And, uh, and, 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 you know, uh, uh, I thought I was familiar with a lot of the bookstores in New York, but I, I did not know about that books or the Mercer Street books, or indeed a, num a number of the other bookstores that you included. Well, Dashwood is a, is a favorite, definitely, but it has a lot of like sort of photography and art books. Um, so it's quite specialized uh, fashion. Um, and then Mercer, Mercer's been there for a while. I think it's a decent, I can't remember, maybe the 80s or the 70s, I'm not sure. And that is really cool because that's sort of like in the, um, you know, in the university, in Greenwich Village, in the university area. So it's got a bit of everything, you know, it's got like sort of, um, I mean, it's mainly, you know, secondhand news books, um, but you can really find anything there. It's great. And it's got very like, it's definitely treasure trove people can dig and it's very nice. Um, Another special place is uh, Bonnie Scott makes cookbooks. So she specializes in cookbooks and um, they're all organized by region. And it can be also like food books and she even sells vintage aprons and little vintage like cookie cutters and things like that. Um, she's wonderful. She used to be also in French Village, but now it's in East Village. Um, that's one of my favorites. Um, um, I mean, I even like the bookshop in the New York Public Library that's right next to here. And um, my favorite library, obviously, is the one on Sixth Avenue um, in uh, the, the, the Greenwich Village. Yes, it's, it's a beautiful yeah. one, beautiful building. Yes. And, yes. Um, but I also like the library in Seward Park and Chinatown. Um, yeah, there's a lot of well, very nice, nice places and they're very explore. comprehensively covered in, in, in this book. Um, um, can, can, you, um, can you discuss your research and how you ended up making the choice to include these? Did you try and include every bookstore, um, uh, not bookstore, every, everything related to? Uh, yes, yes. So basically, uh, it wasn't, I mean, in the end, I did have to become a bit more selective because it otherwise it would be too long but the book definitely expanded as it was being written I think it was initially meant to be like maybe half or two-thirds of the size and then we had to add pages because 
there were more and more places I was discovering along the way. Um, I didn't, I wasn't able to include every single public library from each of the boroughs. Like I kind of just included my favorites. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it was, but I just sort of, for bookshops, I tried to include all of them because I just thought otherwise it wouldn't be fair um, for businesses. And then um, literary landmarks too, I just tried to include most of, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of this in there too, I just, it was too difficult. Yeah. A bit like it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be, yes, it would be a huge, too many. But it seemed um, to me you made a very fine selection. I mean, I tried, I tried. Yeah. Oh, I have to mention the General Society is also included. So thank you. For it that. is, of yeah, course. Thank you. Um, the book is, uh, is, is clearly a wonderful collaboration, and, and not just with your father, but with your editor and the designer, Rizzoli. You all created this very special book because, like I, like I said, it really is it's just so beautifully, it's so beautifully put together. Um, and can you talk more about this partnership? And also, how long did the book take to assemble from the original concept to the actual printing of the book? Oh, uh, well, we did delay it once because my father was taking too long for the drawing, but it took maybe uh, like a couple of years, I'd say, or like a year and a half, maybe. I mean, yeah, I mean, the idea, the idea was done before, but then, you know, paperwork and all that. And then I think the realization of the book, yeah, probably like a year and a half, something like that. And I would say that you have a very fine, you had a very fine art editor too, in the sense, in the sense, in, the, in, the, in the putting it all together. I mean, it turned out very well. Okay. Yeah, something like, yes, fantastic. Um, now, the book is organized by neighborhood and it's shaded in different colors uh, as we go through the different na neighborhoods of New York City. Um, do you have a favorite literary neighborhood? Well, I would say that basically um, I was sad that I wasn't around for that, but I would have liked to be around for Book Row back in the day, but I was not. But sort of east of there, like I'd say maybe the East Village, because the East Village has Bonnie Slotnick, which I mentioned earlier. It has Mast, which I quite like. Uh, I mean, Dash is not in the East Village, but it's not far, it's just like that walking distance, and it's got Alabaster, which is sort of like south of Strand and Alabaster, Bonnie Slotnick, and now also, I mean, you know, now I open the bookshop, and um, it's um, in that area too. Yes, I and know. there's also printed matter around nice. the corner from my bookshop. And they have a sort of outpost in the Swiss Institute, and I love printed matter. So I would say probably the East Village. Okay. Yeah. It. And even historically, it makes sense, you know, close to Book Row, you know, all those literary people that used to live there. Sorry, yeah. can you uh, remind me again where exactly was, is Book, was Book Row? What was Book Row was um, between Union Square and Axe Place, kind of like the, like Fourth Avenue. Fourth yes. Avenue between where, where like the village 40, voice? Yes, kind of, yes. Right. Um that there was a whole sort of all of that was just covered in bookshops. And now now there's only Alabaster and Strand, and Strand's on Broadway anyway, and so it moved. Um and Alabaster wasn't there back in the day, so it's kind of it's completely gone. Right. Well, that's that's yeah. that's that's too that's too bad. Now when I was looking at your, your, your book in preparation for tonight's book, I kept like, oh, I'm going to, okay, well, let's talk about this, let's talk about that. But in fact, it's, oh, it's almost like every, every single book and every single place that was mentioned in the book um, is a gem. I mean, that's a wonderful thing. There are so many literary gems in New York City. It really is, it's just, it's just fabulous. Um, but I want to ask you, I know you mentioned a few places already, but do you have some, do you have some more favorites throughout the city? Maybe in the outer boroughs, for instance? Mm, no, okay. I mean, no, not really. Right, okay, okay. Um, now, I mean, yeah, I mean, a couple of places have opened since, like Left Bank Books, I like that's in the West Village. Um, oh no, Codex opened just in time, it was in there. No, I think that I've managed to include some, but yeah. No. Right, right. 
but within the ones that you have included, is there any other place that you'd like to mention to our audience that you would, uh, um, that you think is really special? I know everywhere is special, but is there any particular special? I think just the ones I previously mentioned. Right. Okay. That's fair. Um, now, on a, a sort of a sadder note, um, the book was published for the pandemic and, and knowing the challenges that uh, the pandemic had in sm some small businesses, many small businesses, um, do you know, are there any places that you mentioned that are no longer here? Uh, book Book, that's in the in Greenwich Village kind of, um, that's gone, but I don't know if that's COVID related. Um, I, can I see the book? Yes, push down. Uh, No, I mean, honestly. Well, that's good. I mean, no, that's, I think that's, 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 that's great. That's yeah, great. That's great. New, that's great news. Most of them are still standing, I think, which is great. Uh, no, that's it. I think. Um, I also want to mention that the book also includes uh, a number of interviews. Um, and these uh, and the interviews range from um, uh, an interview with uh, Eddie Hawaii. Yes, Eddie Hawaii, um, to uh, Hamish Bowles. Um, the who else? Um, I think was it uh, Richard Price, Sigrid Nunez. Anyway, it's 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 it, 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 you know it, it, it's wonderful because it's it's um as I said it isn't just a pure listing of of bookstores and and literary places. It's all sort of interwoven in a really in, in a really lovely way. So really, it is it is a it is a it is a marvelous book. Um. Now, yes. Finally, I want to move on to your own bookstore, which yes. as I mentioned at the beginning um, of the discussion, it has just been open six weeks. It opened on September 15th. Um, it's such, such a thrilling development. Can you tell uh, the audience the story of how that came about? Yes, well, after writing uh, the book, I interviewed so many people who had bookshops and I really liked them and, um, seemed like a nice job and something I wanted to do also and I sort of thought oh I want to be like them and so I wanted to open my own bookshop and I'm glad I didn't have the time because then there was COVID but um, you know when things started to sort of like calm down and I guess um, rents have dropped a bit and so on I found the base and um was the perfect size and it was on a block that I liked. And so I decided to, I went for it. And so now I've opened Pillow Cat Books and it's an animal themed bookshop. And it's in the East Village on 9th Street between uh, second and first next to the center. And um, yeah, everything there is organized by animal. Um, people often think it's a kid's bookshop, but it has adults two adult books. Uh, it's got, actually, it's got all kinds of books, uh, you know, used, new, um, yeah, just a lot of, it does have a lot of vintage, but, and it has kids and it has um, photography, art, literature, all sorts of books, but the only um, requirement is that an animal needs to be in the book. And so then that's how I then organize them by animal. And uh, yeah, it's been fun. So now, now I do that. Well, it's um, it sounds it sounds it sounds wonderful. I mean, you're in you're in a the two uh, your location is um is it, it, it is rather is rather terrific. Um, and how has the traffic been? How how is how is business? I mean, I know it's so early, but uh, it it's good. I think good. Yeah, people are coming in. Um, Right. Well, that's 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 fantastic. So um, anyway, it's, it's it's wonderful to have another independent bookseller in New York City. Um, I think we might take um, some questions now. If um, the audience here have any, um, or we've any online, 
And uh, yeah, thank you. Another one from Heights. And I think there's a greater density of those plaques you were talking about in Brooklyn Heights than almost anywhere else um, are familiar with my building, red plaque. Um, as part of the neighborhood organization, uh, we, the neighborhood organization, Brooklyn Heights Association, um, did a survey right after COVID to find out what the neighborhood wanted in terms of new businesses to replace all the closed ones that had closed over COVID. Um, mainly chains have closed on our main street, which is Montague Street. And the number one thing that the neighborhood wanted is a bookstore. So we have been um, speaking with existing fixed bookstores and other people about how best to lure someone to the neighborhood to open a bookstore. Do you have any advice? Can we get you? Um, <laughs> well, I am a one woman person. And so the answer is probably no, because I just <laughs> opened one there. And so I'm always in it. And but I mean, yes, I, otherwise I would love to. Um, that would be super fun. But um, it would be animal themed. And I, otherwise, I don't know. I mean, I think every high street needs a bookshop. I agree. I couldn't agree more. Um, but I don't really know what to recommend. I mean, I uh, I would love to, but I I don't know how to open the one. I, I think what we're finding is the thing about bookstores is that they are both a passion and a business, and that's where it gets tricky because you have to come up with the rent. Yeah. Yes. So anyway, and then you write for anybody. Please. Yep. I mentioned a lot of um, bookstores that are particularly in Manhattan. I'm wondering if the book covers the other boroughs as well. Yes, it does. But um, initially, I thought, because as I said, the, the length of the book sort of like almost doubled. So initially, I was thinking, oh, like, let's just do Manhattan and then maybe I'll do a Brooklyn one or something like that. But in the end, we included them. And so they do, yes. Right. Do you want to mention? But it's that? just that I'm more familiar with. Manhattan. I'm more familiar with downtown, actually. You should probably gather it from the conversation. Uh, would you like to mention a few of the ones that you have mentioned in the in the outer boroughs? Well, there's a Center for Fiction that was used to be here, and now it's over there. Um, there's like your local, you, there's local ones like Greenlight Bookstore and Community Bookstore and, you know, and then in Brooklyn Heights, I think, is that true in Capote's house? Yes, there you go. <laughs> no, no. I mean, it's just the regular workshops that are in Brooklyn. So in terms of the, the, the images are exquisite. Right? They really are so beautiful. The book is so colorful and we could have our audience look through it a little bit later. And just, I think it's so wonderful in terms of your dad, well, just quick, quick question about the New Yorker. That was quite a leap at the beginning. You said he came to New York and then he pretty much ended up on the cover of the New Yorker. But was there a story to that? that that's mm -hmm. a big and wonderful leap. I'm sure people have <laughs> I, I mean, no, I mean, that, that's the story <laughs> that he was just young and that he. Thanks. That's a super book. And we'll take some online questions. Just uh, Elizabeth Anderson is asking, did you document buildings with relationships with particular authors? If so, what authors and what did they write? No, I don't think I did. I mean, I think, I think initially I did want to sort of, yeah, like, I guess, um, like, Chelsea Hotel um, is in there. Um, yeah, that. Like, yeah, yeah, like all these the places. Yeah, all these places that authors used to go to or that they refer to in their works. But yeah, so yes, I guess the answer is yes. I know even as a, a, a child, that was 
my first foray, my, my dad would take us to o, o. Henry's booth at Pete's Tavern. Yeah. We grew up so enjoying them. We knew we were sitting where the, the gift of the Magi was and all of that. So it, it yeah, yeah, yeah. Magic. That place was great. In fact, I interviewed, I think I interviewed the manager there. And so there's some stories about that. And for all of our listeners, because who doesn't love Pete's Tavern? Just to let you know, they have their full menu is back. Oh, beautiful. Yes. I didn't understand why they didn't do outside because they used to do outside and then there was COVID and then they just didn't open outside again. And I thought that was strange. Well, it, was, it had to do with their gas oh, wow. production and all of that. Oh. So that came, turned into a complicated process oh, okay. when, and Cod Ed was involved in all of that. But but it's back and the yes, menu. Exactly. Yes, yes. I yeah. love I love Pete's Tavern. Me too. Yes. So Inez says Amazon is killing independent bookstores. As you researched your book, what were some unique uh, store experiences you found? Um, well, I like going in the bookshops where the people who own the bookshop mm -hmm. are. So that's why I like Bonnie Slotnick, because like Bonnie's just in her shop. And so is David from Dashwood. Uh, Otto Penzler. I liked interviewing Otto Penzler from the Mysterious Bookshop in Tribeca. Um, I went down in their basement where his office was, and his office was really cool. And I interviewed him. He was actually my first interview, I think, for the book. And I think it's the first interview in the book, too. Um, and also my son's called Otto, so I like that. And uh, he also publishes mystery books. And I mean, he also has like this great, or maybe he sold it. I'm not sure. He had like a great library in Connecticut to, I mean, he was a great person to interview. So that was, then actually there was a signing there for the book too. So that was a great experience. Also they sell my book there, which I like because they only have mystery and crime. <laughs> And I like that they also sell my book because I find that kind of cool. Wonderful. And with respect to the animal feed, yes, is it is an incredible animal lover or what? What? Uh, uh, well, I do like animals, but um, I just found that um, the characters uh, in uh, some of my favorite books they were all animals, like Snoopy or you know, just like kid, a lot of kids' books and things like that. And so I thought it was a nice way to organize books. Oh, I did know your Charlie Brown bag on the way in, and I, I, I loved it. So, and I believe, I, did you mention that you're wearing the logo, aren't you? Is I am. Of the bookstore. Yes, yes, this is the logo. So Susan said to answer the other attendees' questions, there's an independent bookstore in Kew Gardens that might want to expand into Brooklyn. So you have your lead. <laughs> it is. Okay. <laughs> so you're on it. Okay. So that was. Well, I'll just I'll just finish by that. You know, um, in one of the uh, one of the interviews that Cleo um, did was uh, that's included in the book, and there she has a number of great questions. Um, so, Priya, I'm just going to ask you to finish this. Where is the best place to sit down and read in New York? Oh, well, um, I like that little garden behind the Jefferson Market Library. I think that's nice. Um, that's off Greenwich Avenue in the West Village. It's a beautiful garden. Mm -hmm. it's enough I, but it's not always open but right. I think that's nice to get a book at the library and then sit there and read it or three lives we had one more did you visit did you visit and or include the library hotel on east 41st street I sure did okay yep Please. and I went uh I went I I think I think they gave me a tour there well, at least, yeah, they, I think they did. And I went to the bar and um, yeah, it's a great place. Okay, yeah. Well, just I'm gonna mention a few of the other places that, um, that are included. Um, 
as this is organized by geographical districts, we've got poets, house, and 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 Blue Stockings bookstore in um, in the financial district and downtown Lower East Side, Soho, Noho, and Nolita, uh, the one called McNally Jackson, um, and of course the Strand, and as you mentioned, Alabaster Bookshop. Mm -hmm. Uh, the East Village, I think we've probably covered the East Village fairly well. Um, uh, the West Village, oh, the unoppressive non-imperialist bargain books, which is really a, a, a fantastic, a fantastic little store. Um, you mentioned the White, the White Horse Tavern um, in the Gramercy Chelsea area, Books of Wonder, another mm -hmm. like really lovely uh, children's book. Um, you of course highlighted the Gramercy Typewriter Company um midtown we have covered and um, let's see um okay also in queens let me mention that like topaz bookstore cafe mm -hmm. and the astoria bookshop um in the bronx the lit bar and uh the new york botanical garden shop it obviously has some books oh and a very important literary landmark the edgar allen o cottage now, of course, there is like over 200 um, literary places mentioned, but that was just a sound bite. So, Cleo. And Karen, just one more, because this, okay. this, we, this, I, do you have any live animals residing in the bookshop? <laughs> um, I have a uh, little kitten that is um, at home right now. Okay. So. Um, Cleo, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. I know how busy. I mean, when you start a new business, can you imagine how busy you are? I know Cleo also has a young family, so it's also so kind of you to find time to come well, and talk you about me. your absolutely wonderful book. And I want to mention that you will be able to purchase copies of this fantastic book. Um, and for those of you who are online audience, to mention that it is available through the Rizzoli, um website. So thank you all for coming both online and in person. Um, and it's been wonderful to, to see you. Um, we are going to present you with the poster as a little souvenir and a lifetime library membership. But um, unfortunately the poster is up at the front of the room and Victoria, uh, our audience has seen Victoria Dangle. Victoria, would you like to come on camera and say a few words as we, as we, as we as our final conclusion? Just to say thank you to our both in live and, and our live audience and our at home audience. And to, to thank Cleo for her wonderful book and uh, which we are, we'll, we'll treasure our copy. And, um, and we love your, your dad's draw, drawings. So, so happy to have those and thank you for coming. And uh, thank you to everyone for your support. All right, and we'll see you on November. November 16th. 16th for a TKTS lecture uh, with Nick Late, he of Perkins Eastman. I think you're going to never look at the TKTS booth, booth in the same way. So we look forward to seeing everyone at that lecture. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.